What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Above and Below, a Salt Life podcast. I'm your host, Kieran Anderson, and today we have Chris Hopkins on with us. Chris, what's up? How's it going? It's going great, man. It's it's beautiful down here in Texas. It's still like 80 degrees, and the water's warm, so I'm happy. Is it warm there, like year-round? It's not, so it just totally depends on the weather. We have these crazy weather patterns. The water was in like 55 a couple weeks ago, like Thanksgiving yeah. week, but now it's probably 65, so it's... It's, it just fl- it fluctuates all year long. Yeah, it sounds like it. So you're from Texas. Did you grow up there? What, give me your little uh, backstory about yourself. I did. So I grew up on Galveston Island. So just a little barrier island about an hour south of Houston. So Houston, a giant city. Millions of people live, uh, you know, live in the in the area. But it was nice growing up on the little, you know, on the island and a little bit away from from all that good stuff. And, you know, that's, that's the great thing. The water's always close by. I got, I get to see the beach every single day. Um, you know, the beach is a mile away, so I get to drive my golf cart and that's take sick. the kids to the beach and all that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you, did you grow up surfing then when, because you were living on the Island or? I did. So I was lucky. My, my dad always surfed. So he's, he's, he's been like competing and, and surfing since he was a kid. So I just naturally jumped on board as soon as I could swim. I was, I was in the water on a board, uh, jumping in the back of the truck with all the boys to go to contests and, <laughs> and, and, and things like that. that. So, yeah. um, when I was about 10, I really kind of dove in. I was like, this is my thing. This is, this is what I'm gonna do forever, you know, until I can't anymore. How inconsistent are the waves there? Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. It no, is it's, <laughs> it's, oh, it's super inconsistent. Absolutely. So, uh, especially in the summer. So you can go a month without riding a wave. So, yeah. Uh, but right now this is like surf season. So there's been surf for a week straight. Oh, no way. So it's been light wind and just a little bit of ground swell rolling in, you know, nothing big, but enough to get you in the water. Um, you know, unless some storms come through the Gulf in the summer. Yeah. Uh, uh you know, uh, unless that happens, it's usually flat in the summer. It's 100 degrees, the water's 90 degrees, and it's <laughs> there's not much surf. Just so, water's melting off your board. Oh, yeah. And so once fall rolls around, it's, uh, you know, we get these frontal systems that, that move south, and it kind of creates a little onshore onshore wind, and it's mostly wind swell, and will give us something to ride. So you just joined Salt Life, right? I did. Sick, dude. It's so fun, like talking to everybody and just everybody's from everywhere and right. like nobody really thinks okay we're gonna surf in texas every day they think okay no. we're going to california yeah. or hawaii right but <laughs> um i know you guys get good waves so it's like it's so sick to like have the salt life fam like be everywhere you know so right. now we know people in texas or florida or california it's so funny to me i'm like every single time i talk to someone i'm like this is so fun like i love it no it's funny that's that's the number one question if i've ever been traveling you know in the water Hey, where yeah. are you from? Oh, I'm from Texas. There's waves in Texas, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we have a big coast. We, we, we get some surf, so uh, that's always the number one question. <laughs> so you so you grew up shortboarding or longboarding when you were living in uh, Shortboarding. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, shortboarding. I mean, when you're a Grom, you can surf on anything, really, so. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just shortboarding, and then, you know, we I've been competing since I was 10, and I, I'll enter the longboard division, and. And yeah. if you have a longboard in Texas, you'll surf twice as much. It's, <laughs> you know, a, you know, either a mid length or a longboard. You have to have a bigger board in the quiver. You'll surf so much more. What's what's up with the tanker surfing there? Tankers. That's usually the second question I always get is uh, you from <laughs> Texas. Do you tanker surf? You know, so um, it's it's a wild thing. You know, it's it's something that, you know, you're in the middle of this bay or this ship channel. Yeah. And all of a sudden, this waist high wave is coming at you. You're like, "Whoa, this is wild!" For the but, for the people that don't know what tanker surfing it is, it's literally when a huge ship rolls through and creates a crazy wake behind it, but then it hits like a shallow sandbar, basically, right? Exactly, exactly. You have these giant tankers, you know, coming in into the ship channel. Um, you know, it's the Houston Ship Channel, uh, Galveston Bay. And so these, I mean, these things are loaded down, yeah. uh, you know, and, and some of these guys who, who tanker surf all the time, they have it dialed. They, they know which tankers are coming, how heavy they are. 
and how fast they're going because all of that dictates, um, what, you know, what kind of wave it might produce. So that is so gnarly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so it's, when, are you, are you getting out there on jet skis and stuff or are you paddling? Uh, so you, you kind of have a boat or a jet ski to get to the spot. Yeah. And then, and yeah, and then you jump off and you wait for the wave to come and then you can ride it for, you know, a mile. Are you kidding me? Oh yeah. No, it's a leg burner. Dude, it's I incredible. Do that. that sounds insane. So yeah, it's mostly, you know, like a longboard t- type of wave, but you're cruising, cutting back and forth and, and just like I said, I think last year I rode one, we rode one for like six or seven minutes and, Jeez. uh, yeah, it's <laughs> it's pretty wild, and sometimes the, the dolphins show up, and uh, we'll we'll start surfing with you too. So, do you look on like the like on an app like AIS or something to see when tankers are coming in, or is there like a scheduled time that the tankers come in? Yeah, there's there's a schedule. There's uh, there's a site you can you can log into and 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 check what the schedule is, and um, you know sometimes you'll see a big tanker coming and it doesn't create a wave. Yeah, it's pretty wild. It's either going too slow or it's going too fast or it's not heavy enough. So you, you can get kind of skunked as well. So you really have to kind of do your homework and, and uh, especially just knowing which part of the, the bay to go to. Do the tides fluctuate a lot and make the waves better or worse? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it, it, it creates a little bit of a difference there. I, I haven't noticed a, a big difference when, I, when I've gone. Um, it makes a pretty good difference on the beach side. Uh, we typically have pretty shallow water offshore here in Galveston, so uh, the more the water, the better. Uh, but while we're out in the bay, tanker surfing, um, it makes a makes a little bit of a difference, but you know nothing significant. What about boards? Are you using like just standard short boards, or do you have boards with more foam in them? Or definitely need some more foam. Foam is your friend for sure, especially in Texas. Uh, tanker surfing, a lot of long boards. Um, you know because you. you with such a long wave, you, you'll come you'll come to, to steep parts of the wave, and then there's some kind of uh, slower sections where you need something to glide through and uh, through some deep spots and and kind of make it to that next uh, little sandbar there. So um, while you're tanking surfing, most most mostly a longboard. Uh, I have shortboarded some certain areas where it's like a shorter wave. Uh, so in, you know, in Galveston area, there's probably a handful of little breaks uh, to look for when you're out tanker surfing. It might be a sandbar in the middle of the bay and then there might be a man-made jetty, uh, you know, a mile up and you can, you kind of chase all the, that one wave, you can catch it in different sections. So it's pretty cool. Is there a lot of people that tanker surf in Texas? There's a good chunk, probably not as many as you think. Um, In Galveston here, there's a guy who runs charters who does it. So it's totally legal to do. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. I mean, as, that's probably the one thing I would say for people trying to do it is just to kind of at least know your way around the, you know, the ship channel and the bay. And because uh, you can, you know, boats have flipped. They're not ready for this wave yeah. to come through. It hits your boat and, and then and now you're flipped over. So, um, you know, as of right now, yeah, it's it's legal. You, you can charter a boat and uh, James Fulbright will, will, will take you out there. Is there like f- certain tankers that you guys look for to coming in? You're like, oh, that thing's going to throw a huge wave. Oh, yeah. The, I love the ones that are just kind of sitting s- sitting low in the water, right? They're they're loaded down with cars or, or you know, all kind of good stuff. And it's and it's moving along. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Here <laughs> we go. This, this is going to be a good set. That's so sick. Do you do you prefer tanker surfing over like normal swells in Galveston? Or, or I mean, I guess that's consistently coming through, right? You always have tanker waves. Uh, yeah, I guess you do every single day. There's, it's, you know, it's, it's a busy ship channel. You can, on an average day, you can look, you know, over, out, out into the, um, you know, the horizon and there's ships just waiting yeah. to enter that, that, sh- that ship channel. So, um, you know, if you have access to a boat and, and all that good stuff, then yeah, you could do it all day. But, um, I honestly prefer surfing on at the beach. Just, yeah. it's, it's just a better wave. Um, just the, the consistency is, is not quite there, but definitely prefer, uh, surfing at the beach. Are there any particular, uh, tanker sessions that you've had that you're like, this is the best one ever that I've ever seen? My best session was probably right 
right at a year ago, right at a year ago, I was, we were out there and, um, I mentioned earlier that I caught a wave for like six or seven minutes, rode it a mile, and I was on the wave with my dad and my son. No way. So, yeah, it was epic. It was epic. So we're all just kind of crisscrossing and, and cruising and uh, just rode it forever. So uh, definitely my, my favorite tanker session there. Um, what is the process like getting ready for tanker surfing? Because I feel like I always see like the, the – um, Obviously, Ben Gravy is like a full frother, so he is, he's is he been there. He's done the tanker surfing there, I'm pretty sure. But it's funny like seeing like him go do that stuff because he's always either on a ski or like a boat or anything like that. But you're always saying – you were just saying like, yeah, you got to take a boat. You got to take a ski, right? So do you personally have a boat or a ski that you set up? And is there like a certain way you set stuff up so then you can just hop off and be like, okay, we got to go? And is there certain spots that you have to be at too? I, yeah, I mean, I, I personally don't have a boat or a ski, so I'm just always hoping for that invite. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's a process, you know, it, it, everything's pretty spread out in this area. Yeah. So you have, you can't just jump in the car and go, you need to load the boat on the trailer, uh, get, get to the, get to the launch. Um, and then where you're surfing is, is kind of spread out as well. So you, you kind of, once you're in the boat, you go a mile this way, you, you'll go a mile this way and and just kind of track these swells and and just hope for the best really are there certain angles of the land that you're like oh this is going to be a good wave or maybe that wave is going to be insane and and do the tankers create waves both ways on the way in and on the way out i usually usually i think the inbound tankers are are best yeah just um for, for whatever reason, I just I don't know if the way the way the the, the swell travels off the, off the bow or or whatever it is, but um, when they're coming in, that's usually when we are kind of licking our chops, yeah, uh, the, the most, yeah. Do you ever go out there and there's just like a full crowd of, of guys? N- no, <laughs> Some, so somehow sick. I haven't. Yeah, I've gone out there and I've caught one wave, you know, and I've spent several hours out on the boat. Um, so, so it it, is, like I said, it it's, is a process then. I mean, if you're sitting out there for a couple yeah. hours waiting for a tanker to come in. No, it, yeah, it's a process for sure. You need several hours to dedicate, you yeah. know, s- spend half a day. Uh, a lot of the guys will just leave super early when, the you know, the wind is calm. Uh, it's not 100 degrees blazing outside yet. Um, and, and just get on it and then, you know, catch a – a few tankers coming in or, or out or yeah. whatever it may be. How many waves do tankers usually create? Is like the, is, is it kind of like a set, like the first waves, whatever the best wave, cause that has the most impact in the water. And then after that, there's a couple waves after, or how does that work? Yeah, no, it is kind of a set. There's usually one main wave. Yeah. You may see a bump before it. And there's usually a couple smaller waves behind it that are real hard to ride. Uh, but there's usually just that one main wave that is going to just carry you through, um, you know, for that long ride. It's kind of like the wave pool where you kind of have a little bump b- before a wave. And then there's also a little kind of wave sucking up behind it. Uh, but it's real hard to ride. It's, you know, that's kind of the, the, the style that, that it comes in at. There's that one, that, there's that one wave you want. And if you miss it, you're, you're, you know, that's not good. You either yeah, need to jump on the ski and catch up back <laughs> up to it. Uh, or whatever. <laughs> um, but like I said, if, if you fall or if you, it dies out in one area, you jump back on the ski and you keep going cause it's going to hit that next shoal and you want to be there and, and you, you just keep going. It's, it's interesting. You just, we're bringing up the wave pool. Like surfing has progressed so much, right? Like we used to just surf out in the ocean. That's it. And now there's tanker surfing and there's wave pools all over the place. Um, what do you think the main differences are between obviously tanker surfing and a wave pool? They're both man-made waves. Right. Right. No, I mean, we have, uh, you know, the wave pool here in Waco, yep. which is like a four hour drive for me. Love the place. Um, it's like a real wave though. It's, you know, every time you leave the wave pool, you're completely satisfied. Yeah. Um, you know, if you catch a great wave tanker surfing, you're satisfied too. You're just, it's, it's wild to be in the middle of this big body of water and having this, this wave come in, um, you know, at the (laughs) wave pool, you're expecting it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, 
but the like you say, the wave pools have progressed so much, and it it's it's a real way. I mean, you can get barreled, you can uh, you can do real surfing uh, at the pool. How how you know? big are the waves for that the tankers make usually? Oh, you can catch a waist to chest high. No way. It can, yeah, there can be a waist to chest high wave rolling through. Um, like I said, not you know, it's 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 a crumbly wave, so yeah. you need some foam. But um, I'll have to send you some pictures. And, yeah, you know. absolutely. I'd love to see it. I, have you seen that wave in China, the tidal bore wave? Yeah. Yeah, in that river? Yeah. There's Is like, a river? Yeah, I think so. That wave looks insane. I, I want to go surf like unique stuff like that so bad. I want to go yeah. tanker surf. Like that sounds insane. I'm going to text Ben yeah. after this and be like, dude, let's go to Texas again. You're taking me tanker surfing. <laughs> like, I'm getting all frothed Thanks, up. Ben. I get all frothed up yeah. like talking to random people about this stuff. Like it's so fun. To right. listen to everybody's <laughs> stories and be like, because because realistically, you can surf anything. Like, look at, for instance, Ben Gravy. He surfed every yep. single state. Every like, state, somehow. You can make it, it happen. Yeah. yeah, you can make it happen. You just need to find the waves. But um, it sounds like such an adventure. I Have you ever, like, just been out there and gotten fully skunked? Just no waves? I'd, I'd say so. You know, there was like one rideable wave that came in, but it was very weak, very short. Yeah. And it just wasn't worth the half day spending <laughs> on the water, you know? It, it's, it's, like, so, yeah, I've been skunk doing it as well. What, uh, what, give me some highlights of tanker surfing, like anything that just sticks out in your memory. Oh, man. Um, you know, there's, there's, it's pretty cool. You can tanker surf in a lot of different uh, cities as well. Yeah. So there's, you know, I'm, I'm up kind of on the Northern coast of Texas, you know, there's other shipping channels, um, in Texas as well, where you can kind of find waves. Yeah. Um, and they may, they all hit, hit, you know, the sandbar is a little different. They may hit this wall and, and you can just jump off a wall and, and surf it that way. Yeah. Um, or you, or you have to jump in the boat and go find it. Um, you know, so they just, those times are always, are always fun that they, they always, you know, just the hunt, the journey, it, it's all part of the experience. Um, and like I said, last year having my dad and, and, and my son on the same wave and so uh, just crisscrossing and, and, and just having a blast. That's was definitely the highlight I've ever had. Do you ever have like the the guys that are working on the tankers get all frothed up and start like yelling at you like this is so sick? <laughs> you know, believe it or not, the tankers are pretty far away. Yeah. You're not all that close to them. They look close because they're so big. Yeah. But um, once that tanker goes by, it takes a couple minutes, you know, t- to to see anything come through. So um, th- there's there's some of the the boat pilots. Yeah who bring these ships into, into port. Some of those guys surf and they tanker surf as well. So sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll catch a video from them, um, videoing guys, uh, you know, tanker surfing. <laughs> That's so so yeah, they, 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 they get all pumped up with that too. Yeah. Do you have any, uh, upcoming trips coming up or anything like that or any more tanker surfing that you're trying to plan? Oh man, I'm always ready to tanker surf. I need, I need <laughs> to pl- just plan a trip with a buddy who has a boat. I just, that's that's my limitation there um you know i don't have any trips planned i'll be in san diego in uh, next month sick um just like for a long weekend and then usually we do a a family costa rica trip every summer yeah costa rica is like a second home i've probably been there 10 times i got married there no way Uh, yeah so that that's it's only like a three and a half hour flight from here so it's it's very popular with with the texans i love that dude well when you come to san diego hit me up let's go surf I'll hit you up. I'll hit you up. Well, uh, maybe I'll, I'll have, to... have a new jet ski by then. I left my ski up in Oregon for this last swell. So I'm trying to get okay. a new one down here. Maybe we can go do step offs or something. I'll show you the, I'll show you the step Let's off, uh, guru action that we do here instead of, uh, tanker surfing, <laughs> but I do want to tanker surf. I think that'd be so fun. Come to Texas. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get it linked up. Do you, uh, do you have any social media, Instagram or anything that people can follow you on? Yeah. Mostly on Instagram at hoppy crew. That's me, Chris Hopkins. Uh, you can find all the, all the action uh, from me and my family and, um, you know, day-to-day surfing. I do a little surf report on my story every morning for all the, for all the boys who don't live on the island. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's so sick. I love that. They all appreciate that. That's sick. 
Just get them all frothed up. You're like, oh, dude, it's firing That's out it. here. We're on. Yeah. Locals delight. Sorry. So sick. Sorry you can't make it. I love that. <laughs> it's such a unique experience talking to people like just from everywhere. Like you literally think about Texas. You do not think that you're surfing at all. No. So it's just so yeah. fun. It's like the forgotten coast of surfing. Totally. 100%. But we're here. Yeah. And you guys do get waves. So that's the thing. We get waves. I shouldn't have said that, but. We get plenty of waves. <laughs> go to Waco. Yeah. Everybody listening, go to Waco. Every time I go to Waco, I meet guys from California, the East Coast, Hawaii. Everybody's flying in to go to Waco. Yeah. Well, Chris, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, thanks, everybody, for listening in to today's podcast. Chris, go have some fun surfing some tanker waves. I hope to God I get to get over there soon. Come on. I'll take care of you. <laughs>